Yes, I have been here since 9.40. Look at the state of my hair. Look at the time. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Aquaba, my beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. It's Mela Mishi. Today I have a like a preparation vlog basically before I go to Ghana. Um, this is obviously me in the future. I just wanted to introduce the vlog because for some reason I have not been introducing any of my videos lately. I apologize. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that my Ghana trip, <laughs> my Ghana trip started on a very interesting as you can see from the title of the video this is the juicy juicy story time and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my my experience with a very popular Instagram hairdresser in Ghana I also want to take this opportunity to wish you guys a happy new year this is like the first time that I've actually sat down and filmed a video in 2022 and thank you guys so much for the support that you showed me in 2021 and I'm super excited for 2022 baby honestly this is gonna be this is gonna be the year of me like I am gonna focus on myself focus on my goals and manifest my dreams this year so that's the energy we're going to be emulating throughout the whole 2022 so i hope you guys were on board i hope you're in the back just want to start this year with positive vibes so let's start this video with my first hollywood bags <laughs> Did your like trip to Malaysia with your boyfriend? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it came up on my explore because I used to live there. Really? So like, I'm always watching like with people's your, vlogs. With your family, yeah, yeah, oh, I lived there for. Really? Um... Right, my legs are open and ready to go. <laughs> I'm still just cleansing the skin. Just relax. <laughs> I know it's easy for me to say relax. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are you hot? I'm good. I'm I'm a generally cold person. So. <laughs> yeah, but this tends to suddenly warm. Yeah, color. I'm sweating under my armpits, but I'm yeah. still cold at the same time. It's very bizarre. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, I'm good now. No, no, no! Please, <laughs> break it up. please be OCD with my <laughs> vagina. And <laughs> out. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, <sighs> that one was so good. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, you're not hairy. Like, you're not. So that's what you're talking about. Hey Archie, so what are we doing now? Hi, so now we're going to apply a hydro jelly mask to, <laughs> to Michelle's vulva. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Um, so this one is Egyptian Rose and it's just to hydrate the skin so this mask will just cool the skin down and also it creates like a vacuum seal around okay. the area so the aftercare products that we've put on will actually get a chance to be pushed into the skin, okay. the newly exfoliated skin. Okay. So, that sounds good. Yeah. This looks very really pretty though, it's literally got rose petals in it. Yeah. It actually smells really nice. This Ooh, that smells so good. So 
There's different ones, but I'm using this one. Cute. And the rose will have natural and anti-inflammatory properties. Yes, exactly. That's how you know I used to work at Lush. <laughs> oh my gosh, did you? Yeah. So we're all done. Thank you so much, Archie. I look so You're crazy. <laughs> Just slick on my hair back there. Um, so you can find me at, at Sugared by Archie. 90% of her clientele are women of colour as well. So yeah, and she's super knowledgeable guy. She's a medical student. Um, <laughs> she's just gonna give you a plethora of information if you come visit her. And yeah, Aww. I need to run to my next appointment. So it was so nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you too. Yay. Okay, let's go. As my aunties are asking me like what products I use and stuff like every single time. Oh, you just told me your chest. Whoops, didn't realize. Sorry, I do. But I use my nail to pick a one. I'm trying to meet Amore in Ghana. We, do you listen to Amore at all? No, who's that? Oh, let me put her on for you. I love this song. Yeah. You already know it. Who the Good morning guys, good morning. My house is a mess, let me not show you. Um, I'm about to get my lashes done for my gun trip now. So I'm just trying to open up and all that at the same time. Let's do this. So I'm about to head out and get my lashes done with my lash tag, Little Rock Beauty. Really luckily managed to get a an appointment on Christmas Eve, which is today. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. If I eat a quick banana, I don't know about you guys, but if I eat too much early in the morning, I just feel super nauseous. So I don't even like bananas, but that's what we're having just to keep us going for the day. Anyway, I really need to rush off, so let me just quickly finish my matcha, finish my banana, and then we'll go to lashes. Hey guys, so I'm just outside of she. Okay, so story time. Before we get into this, um, I'm not gonna name and shame this hairdresser. Um, it's not on brand, <laughs> first and foremost. And I know that a lot of people go to this place and have an amazing experience. That was not my experience. I'm just sharing what I experienced when I went there, um, just as a light warning. As I said, if you guys are going to Ghana and you wanna know who this hairdresser is, please feel free to just DM me on Instagram and I'll let you know. But I'm not about to put their name out on the interwebs like this because <laughs> that's not the energy we're trying, to, we're trying to project in 2022, you know? I'm gonna let the, the clips roll, to be honest. Let's just go with it. 
I'm about to get my braids done and my hair washed and do some really nice braids. I will insert a clip here of the style that I'm going to be doing. It's very busy in there right now. There's literally about 10 or 12 customers getting their hair done at the same time. I should have come a bit earlier really but it was fine um yeah and then just got one more thing to do after this gonna get a pedicure with my auntie gonna take her out for a little treat and then we'll be done with the kind of prep so exciting guys let's go i just want to give a really quick disclaimer as well so i actually contacted this hairdresser six weeks before i came to ghana i sent them multiple pictures of the style that i wanted to ensure that they had the right color that they're able to do the style i was reassured multiple times that's fine we've got all the colors we can do it for you yada 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 i also asked at that point if i could film and on the day as well i let the um, the owner know that i was going to film she was calm she was cool with it um so just to put that out there um because naturally that added to my frustration anyway so I got there at 9.40. Two hours later, I was still waiting for my, my head to be washed and blow dried, okay? <laughs> so I already was a bit, mm, you know, not in the best mood, but when in Ghana, you need to exercise a lot of patience because things are slow and that's, that's it. It was only at the point at which I saw someone come in literally two hours after me and get their hair washed and blow dried before me that I then decided to speak up. I just went to the owner and I was like, look, um, is there an order to things? Like, do we know where I'm at? The lady was very apologetic. She was like, oh yeah, sorry. They should have asked um, who was next. Don't worry, you'll be the next person to come. That should have been the first red flag, but anyway. So let me get up the time. Let me get up some timestamps, yeah, because. I definitely have some for this part cool so so my hair got blow dried and washed um by about 12 30 uh, and i got to the shop at 9 9 30 9 40 so these are details i didn't think i would need to go into but since we're here already let's let's get into the nitty gritty so when it came to washing my hair I don't know what products they used. They were nameless. They had no they had no tags on it. They had nothing on it. Couldn't ask. They didn't know. The person who then proceeded to wash my hair. Tell me why I felt their nails digging into my scalp. They were detangling my hair. I had to to let them know multiple times, please could you comb my hair from the tips to the root, not the other way around. Um and they just didn't seem to get the message, but sure fine and then we got to the point where my hair was gonna get blow dried again i had to let the guy know just be gentle with my hair could you work in smaller sections he was trying to do like a one section situation and i was not feeling it i just had my curly cut my hair was in good condition i was not about to mess it up in this one hair trip that happened i wasn't fast um i was pretty cool it was about 12 30 by this point in time now nobody touched my head top for another four and a half hours five hours i also forgot to mention one of my friends bethan uh i just happened to bump into her at the hair shop at the same time that i was there imagine god is a really small place um she got there earlier than me and i think she'd been waiting for about three hours as well with her hair um being blow dried and washed and nothing has started yet so here's a little clip i don't even remember filming this <laughs> I was thinking my head on me did go and I didn't even go. I can't stay back. Can I pay for this door? Can I go to you? I'm done. Come and let she had been told about four or five times that she was that it was like gonna be five more minutes, five more minutes, someone's gonna finish and then someone's gonna come and do her hair. An hour had passed um, between the first time that she was told that and the last time she was told that. And she was like, ah, cool, I'm gonna bounce now. So finally came to the time where I was gonna do my hair. Let me look at the timestamps, so I'm not chatting crap. Right, so here, if, just so you guys can see that I'm not making stuff up, right? So this is me starting my hair. I just took a picture of it to make sure that the partings were okay. 5.13, 5.13, I'm not, I'm not trying. Now you're probably wondering, wait a second, didn't you wanna get this hairstyle? <laughs> what had happened? Oh, I even forgot a massive part. So I was gonna get this hairstyle right. The type of hair that you use to, to achieve this hairstyle is different from like your normal outre um, expression hair. So the lady, the owner was like, yeah, we need to buy the hair. We don't have that color in stock at the moment. Bearing in mind, I asked her if she had the color before and she said she did, but anyway. Basically gave me her phone. 
it's like choose the hair that you want and then send it to this person and then they'll sort it out for you this is on instagram as well so i thought that was a bit weird as well but cool that's fine i went onto the page um found the hair that i liked sent it over to this brand and then i gave the lady's phone back about an hour later i still hadn't heard anything back regarding the hair um so i just decided to check in with the lady and she was like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. um do you want my like take my phone back and like check on the status of your hair this was about 3.30 maybe. And about five minutes after I sent the hair request to this Instagram brand, they had responded, but she just didn't check her phone. So an hour had passed now where I could have had the hair and obviously because she hadn't attended to the situation, the people were waiting for payment basically before they were gonna proceed with anything. So I obviously relayed that information to her and said, you know, they're just waiting for payment and then they'll send the hair. And then at this point she proceeded to tell me that the hair costed 35 CDs each and that I would need 10 packs of hair and that I'd also have to pay for delivery on top of that too. And I'm sure she like fluctuated the prices as well because what I was seeing on the page versus what she was telling me in terms of prices was different. So altogether to do my hair would have cost me about like 900 CDs. There was a bit of back and forth regarding the hair and like a communication. Um, but at the end of the day, I've been waiting at this hair salon for, you know, eight hours by this point in time. I knew what I had in mind for myself, for my trip for Ghana. So. I just went with it, I was like, cool, calm, that's fine. We're getting into late afternoon, the hair still hasn't arrived, I asked her again. There was a lot of back and forth with the hair, I don't even remember the details of it. It's a traumatic experience to try to block it out, but we're starting my hair. Bearing in mind the climate in Ghana is very hot and humid, and I am a low porosity gal, okay? So when I say my hair was not blow dried anymore, I had a, I had a 90s afro, like, I was rocking a different kind of style at this point in time. So when we were about to start my hair, the lady was like, we need to blow dry your hair again. I said, no. I said, did you even put a heat protection in my hair the first time around? You're trying to tell me you need to do my hair again. Did you not spend about half an hour blow drying my hair with aggression and you're trying to blow dry my hair again? No, sis, no. Calm, cool, she started my hair. Tell me why it took her three minutes to do this, this much, this much of braid, guys. And it's about five o'clock at this point in time. I said, stop. <laughs> I said, please. I was not trying to leave the hair shop in two weeks time to finish a hairstyle. Do you get me? So I had to make the difficult decision to not go with the hairstyle. I said, please. I'm just gonna do large knotless braids, okay? Cause, Cause I have places to be and people to see. On top of all of this as well, my cousin was literally blowing up my phone. She was saying, we're going to Cocorito, we're going to this really nice kind of private beach resort thing. It's Everyone's gonna be there, it's gonna be lit. Just leave the shop now and do your hair. And she was telling me this from 12 o'clock, yeah, from, from early on. I sent her a picture of my hair. I said, look sis, I'm not leaving the shop like this. Like, I know I'm cute, but no. <laughs> I also have plans to, to go and do my pedicure with my auntie as well. I have plans for the day. I had my day sorted, you know, and this just messed it up. So I'm just tired of being in this space and I want to go. So <laughs> let me just um, change up my hairstyle. But the one condition that I had, and like I said, I really, I really messaged this lady to ask her, do you have the colors? She said, yes. The one, the one condition I had for myself going to Ghana was that I was not gonna do black braids because I always do black braids. I do black braids on myself. If I want black braids, I will do it myself. The lady brought over literally a red like this. And I said, that's not brown. We don't have brown. Okay, so what we're gonna do then? <laughs> Usually in Ghana, if they don't have hair, they can go to get someone to go and collect hair or they pay for delivery for someone to bring like specific colored hair. Colored hair. I don't know why this was not given as an option to me because that's what happened previously when they didn't have the hair color that I needed. But these braids weren't the style that I was going for, but uh, either way, I knew exactly how I wanted it to look in terms of the partings and the size of the braids. So when we started and I realized the lady wasn't doing the partings right. You know, I showed her the picture, I was taking pictures just to make sure that she was doing the partings correctly because you know, if you do the partings too big or the braids too small, it just doesn't lay right. It doesn't fall correctly. I was obviously still recording. I'd ask permission. Tell me why once I had my camera off, the owner then came to talk to me and she was like, yeah, so 
I don't think you should be recording anymore. I have planned my content for this week, okay? This is part of a video that I'm already, I'm, I'm already halfway done with. And because you now see that I'm not having a good time, you're coming to tell me to stop recording. Also, I didn't say this to her, I just said why. Like, I have content to make and I'm going to make it. <laughs> I asked you permission six weeks ago, I asked you permission when I came here and you were on the same page. So that happened. The lady, she still wasn't braiding it right. What do I do? What do I say? What do I do? I don't know. At the same time, I was talking about prices of the hair that I was doing. The lady was trying to charge me 450 for this style, bearing in mind I haggled this price down. So I think initially she's trying to charge me 500, but then she was trying to charge me 450 for this style as well. Like the maths was not mathsing, guys. The maths was not mathsing. She was adding a lot of gel. I realized she was adding a lot of gel to my hair, but obviously because my hair was very frizzy at this point in time, in order to make it smooth, she had to add gel to slick it down. I was feeling the hair. I was being very particular at this point in time because everything wasn't going to plan. So I just wanted the final product of whatever style they were doing for me to be good. So I was feeling the hair. I was taking pictures of parts and I was like, instructing the lady as I was going along. There was only one person on my head, and if you go on the, these people's Instagram, they make it seem as though five or six people are gonna be on your head at one time, which I think is why people are enticed in the first place, because they think it's gonna be a quick, you know, quick trip, good quality hair, um, and good service. None of the above, but anyway. I could literally see my natural hair poking out of the braids. There's nothing I can say at this point in time to fix, to fix what was happening, you know. Um, but because there was only one person on my head and luckily I know how to do my own hair, I just decided to help the lady to braid my hair. So it got to a point where I was the only person braiding my own hair because the lady had to go and feather some more expression hair. Like it was a mess, it was a mess. This is my first day in Ghana as well and it just wasn't setting the tone right. So I don't know if I was due for my period or what, but I cried, I literally cried. I was just like, what am I doing here? I'm literally receiving the worst service ever and I'm paying so much more than what I should be paying for this hairstyle. It just wasn't making sense. So I was actually crying. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, the owner came to approach me and she was just, she was just sprouting all kinds, all kinds of nonsense. She was saying, why are you trying to ruin my business? I've been braiding hair for 14 years and now you're trying to ruin my brand for me. I don't know what you have against me. This, this, that, that. I don't even remember what she was saying because honestly, it was just bullshit. It was just crap. I was just like, wait a second. And I, said, I was trying to be really, I'm the kind of person, you know, like if you're talking, I'll let you speak. Okay, you can speak your part. Even if you're trying to crap, I'm gonna listen to you. But when you're done, let me speak as well. So I, I was listening, listen, 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 listen. I was listening to this lady literally abuse me, calling me all kinds of nonsense, accusing me of all kinds of things. I was trying to tell her, you know, I'm not trying to ruin your brand. At the end of the day, I'm just sharing my experience in the store. And if it's a good experience, if it's a bad experience, I'm still gonna share it. You know, at the end of the day, it comes down to customer service, customer experience. Um, and even though I'm here having a really terrible experience so far, at the end of the day, my experience is still continuing. Like I'm still in the shop and you can still rectify what is happening right now. But rather than you rectifying the situation, you're coming to accuse me of trying to ruin your brand. Like, what? So I'm telling you guys this, but did I even manage to get a word in sideways with this lady? She was just, she was shouting. By this point, the whole store, the whole store was watching. She was blasting me down. I was quiet. I was trying to say here, this bit here, this bit there. No, there was a point where I was just like, look here, yeah, are we gonna have a conversation? Because I've allowed you to speak, but I've not spoken. And she walked away from me. The owner walked away from me. She came to me in the shop, blasted me for about 10 minutes, and then walked away from me. Again, I say I'm a tourist. It doesn't, I was already, I, I wasn't even angry before this point. I was just upset. I was genuinely upset. Once that happened, I was mad. Guys, I was mad. How can I be paying for a service? And this is the way that you're talking to me. This is the way that you're treating me. You're literally abusing me. In front of everyone in the store. Embarrassing. So by this point, my voice was up. I even wish that someone recorded me talking, yeah, because <laughs> it was just a lot, but I was chatting 
very factual thing. There was a girl next to me, I think she must have been American, and she was like, she was also like really kind of vocal after that point in time. Even the workers were like, yeah, no, this is not good. This is not good. It was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. I was just basically saying, you know, you can't treat your customers like that. It comes down to communication. You need to let them know when they come in, you know, how many people are in front of them, how long the wait is going to be. If they're saying they want to leave, rather than telling them, oh, no, 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 it's only going to be five minutes when actually it's going to be two hours, you know, give them an idea of how long it's going to be or tell them to come back another day. Other details to add to my frustration was the fact that there were people that arrived after me when I initially thought I was going to be doing the kind of small knotless braid style. And um, the lady was like, oh, can these people go before you because they're going to be doing large knotless this break so it's not going to take us long so they were in and out within about maybe four or five hours they also had a great time and yet in the end i ended up doing the same hairstyle as them but waiting for triple the amount of time I had an auntie i think her daughter must have seen me post her in the background in one of my pictures and she was like that's michelle so she approached me and she was talking to me and she was like you know maybe we need to just go outside and speak with the owner um so halfway through my hair like i had to go outside and speak to the owner she was crying at this point in time as well guys this is, it was a mess it was an absolute mess in the end she apologized we hugged it out it took a lot for us to get to that stage but we got there finished the hair it looked good on the first day but even by day two my uncle was like wait you got your hair done when <laughs> And my uncle doesn't know anything about hair, so for him to even comment on it was, was very, very embarrassing. Very embarrassing, you know, so. Let this be a very gentle warning, guys. And just a general tip, something that I've learned for myself when I'm going to do my hair in Ghana. It's better to go to a hairdresser through word of mouth. Do not use Instagram to find your hairdresser. If you do use a hairdresser in Instagram, just know that they will look at you and decide what price they're gonna give you. So just bear that in mind, like it's not an issue, but if you wanna get really good hair done for a relatively reasonable price, just ask people that you see with really nice hair, where did you get your hair done? Nine out of 10 times, they'll give you the contact, they'll give you the number, they'll you know, show you literally where to go and get the hair done. People are very hospitable in Ghana. So um, use that to your advantage. In the end, I paid half the price. So it was like two, 250 CDs. And I actually gave like 50 CDs to like all the girls that did my hair. Cause it was never a money thing, but there was no way that I was gonna pay full price for the service that I received whilst I was there. And that's on period, so. Yeah, two years later, I went to go and redo my hair at a um, hair shop called Always Posh. Um, I'll put the Instagram in the link down below. And this is actually the length that I wanted as well. It's the style that I wanted as well. Not the exact colors that I wanted. Um, I would have liked some brown in it, but they didn't have any brown. But this will do. Like, this is better. I finished these knotless braids in about five hours. And that included taking out the hair, washing my hair, blow drying my hair, and doing the hair. So when you compare the two, it's just wild. It's just, it's just really wild, like it upsets me. When I think about how much time I spent in hair shops whilst I was in Ghana, considering I was only there for two weeks, it literally makes me wanna cry. It literally makes me wanna tear up, but it's fine. That's the end of the story time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The next video is gonna be, you know, the meat of the Ghana vlogs. So definitely hit your notification bell if you do not wanna miss that. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.